Hi, and welcome to Velo GPS. In this video, we're going to show you how to set up the data screens on your Garmin Edge 1040 or 1040 Solar. This tutorial will focus on data screen setup using the 1040 rather than the Garmin Connect phone app. We will have a separate video featuring data screen setup via a phone, which will be linked on screen and in the description below. We've started this demo with setup commencing from the home page. There is, however, a short run through at the end of the video of how to access data screen setup when powering on your 1040 for the first time. You can skip to this using the chapter links in the description below. Okay, that's the housekeeping done. So we're starting off on our home page and we're just going to select the menu icon from the bottom right. We're going to choose activity profiles and then we're going to select our road profile. So within our profiles, there's a number of options, but we're going to look at data screens. And then within data screens, you can see that there's a number of data screens. We're going to tidy those up in a moment, but for now, we're going to focus on updating data screen number one, which currently has six fields. And if we want to change the layout and data fields, we select that option. And here we can see, as we say, six data fields, but you can have anywhere up to 10 data fields. Now, we tend to find that that gets a little bit cluttered on screen, so you can have as few as one data fields, but for us the optimum is around about seven, and there's two options here. So you can either have three medium sized and four small ones, or one large one and six smaller ones. So we quite like that with the one large one. So if you're happy with the layout, you select the tick, and it says you can tap a field to swap, or double tap to edit. So if we double tap the distance data field there, it brings up the data field categories, and you can see that there's any number of categories from navigation, cadence, heart rate, power, but we're just gonna choose a speed category. And within the speed category, you then have the data field options. So again, we've got lots there, whether it's lap speed, max speed, but we're gonna choose, as we say, just a basic speed data field, and that's updated in the middle. Now we did mention that if you tap a data field and then tap another one on the screen, it will swap them over. So we've tapped speed, we're gonna hit average speed, and you can see that the two of them have swapped over. So now with this top right one, we're quickly gonna update and we're gonna put a distance data field category in and we're just gonna put a basic distance data field. So bear with us and what we'll do is we'll update our data fields as we normally have them. So we're swapping over time of day to the left hand side. Uh, with the right hand side here, I tend to have a power data field. So we've gone into the power data categories. You can see there's lots of options there, um, but we're gonna go with a three second power average is what we tend to have displayed. And then the two bottom data fields I tend to have as navigation fields. So within the navigation category, uh, again, there's lots to choose from, but I tend to put distance to next, so I know when my next uh, course uh, point is turning up, so my next turn. And then on the bottom right, I tend to, again, within navigation, have next waypoints. This is, tells me what I'm looking for next, so it's the next street name or the next turning sort of thing. So happy with that, we select the tick, and we can see that's updated to seven data fields, and then the back arrow takes us back to the main data screens page. So if we wanted to add a new data screen in, we add new, and we can see that there's various options here, but we want to add just a basic data screen. And again, we have uh, the data field categories here from which we can add up to 10 data fields. So we're gonna do just a basic DI2 screen. So if we add in from the gears category, we then have a selection of fields here, but we're gonna go with front gear, uh, I think we'll add rear gear, and then we'll probably put DI2 battery level because that's always good to keep an eye on. So being happy with that, we select the back arrow, we select the tick, and then if we wanted to, it gives us the option to add in extra data fields again. So you just tap on the right-hand side to increase the number, but we're going to go back to just the three that we had um, for the purposes of this demonstration, select the tick, and again, we can double tap um, or tap and swap fields here, so we could add in a different data field if we wanted to, but we're happy with what we've got displayed on the DO2 information, so we're gonna hit the tick and go back. And that brings up now, I guess we'll call it a running order of data screens, and there's lots here that we're gonna tidy up in a moment and delete, um, but for now, screen two is located right at the bottom of this list, and we probably want it to appear after screen one. So to do so, you just tap the icon on the right-hand side, and then you tap and hold this, now it's highlighted, and you can pick it up and drag it to anywhere you like, and we're just gonna drop it in below screen number one on the running order. So as I say, we will do a little bit of housekeeping on this now. Um, so we're generally happy. We will hit the tick, and we can see that screen two's now moved. Um, we'll just get rid of, I think, some of these data fields. So let's remove, uh, I think it was lap summary, wasn't it? And you'll have to bear with us while we go through this. We will do some videos featuring these different data fields. So this was group track. 
and it'll just take us a moment to remove some of these. So workout as a data screen, we'll remove that. Uh, segments, let's take that out as well. We've got solar. You can see it starts off including all of these data screens, and you really just want to reduce it down to what you want to appear in your running order, and all will become clear when I demonstrate what it looks like during a ride. So again, we're just taking these out. There's only a couple left now. With Climb Pro, you can't actually remove it, but what you can do is you can turn it off from the running order. So if you hit the slider on Show Screen, it removes it. So now I think we're happy that we've brought it down to just four data screens. So let's have a quick look at the map. Um, we can choose to always show the map or only when navigating, so we'll pop that onto always. You can also have a small elevation profile included in the map, but we're just going to turn that off. And then the important one that we want to look at is the layout and data fields. So you can add in two small data fields at the bottom here. So if you look there, we've added in a speed and heading. Um, we're quite happy with the speed, we normally have that. But again, if you tap and hold, um, you can uh, swap or double tap to edit. So we're just double tapping, it takes us into the data cache categories and we're just going to put in a very simple distance data category. So ticking takes us back and if we hit the back arrow because we're happy with what we've got here now we can take a look at the elevation page. So again you have the option to show the screen and to update the data field. So this one we've already got grade and elevation highlighted but this screen just puts a plot of distance against elevation. So if you're riding a course it will show you the course profile, where the hills are and then you can make sure that you pace yourself across the ride. But again you can change the data fields at the bottom. So we've double tapped there and we'll go into the navigation, uh, not the navigation, the elevation data category. And we've just put in um, a cent remaining in that data field. So just before we go back and show you what all of that looks like in practice, if you select the three dots at the top of the page there, it just takes you into some options that allow you to, for example, reorder the data field. So we looked at this earlier. You tap, you tap and hold, and then you can move uh, data screens to appear in a different running order and I think that's probably an ideal opportunity just to scroll back to the main home page and from there what we can do is we can select the road profile and that brings up what our screens actually look like. So here we can see our large uh, speed data field in the middle, we've then got our DI2 data page, we scroll across to our map page with our two data fields displayed at the bottom and then we're back on the elevation page where if there was a course there'd be a graph of course elevation displayed and then we scroll back to our main data page and you can scroll in both directions now a handy little tip is if you tap and hold you can highlight the data field and this is whilst you're undertaking a ride there we go we've managed to highlight it now and if you tap it again it brings up the data field categories and you can choose to update on the fly. So that's just a handy way of changing a data field if you didn't want to stop and go all the way through the rigmarole of going through the menus that we've just highlighted. So in a few short minutes, that's how to update the data fields on your Garmin Edge 1040. Okay, so we mentioned earlier that we'd show you how to navigate to the data screen setup pages when you turn your new 1040 on for the first time. Once we've entered our preferred language, we're going to skip the phone pairing page as we want to get straight into using the device. We then update our preferred unit and time format and enter details of our gender, age, weight and height. At this point you select continue to choose the activity profiles that you wish to include. The profiles have subtle setting differences such as GPS turned off for the indoor profile but they can all be fully customised to your preferences. Once you're happy with your chosen profiles, tap on the tick and select the profile that you want to edit. If you've watched from the beginning of this video, you'll now recognise the Profile Options screen, from which you can access and edit your data screen options as shown earlier. Last but by no means least, if you want to delete an activity profile, you simply swipe left and select the Delete icon. If you found this video useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment below and check out our links and subscribe for plenty more Garmin 1040 demos and tutorials. Bye.